Hello and welcome to the Extra Edge, a sports analytics podcast powered by Connects on Sports. Please like and subscribe on any and all of the platforms you prefer to listen to your podcast. I'm Dave Grinjinski, and today we're talking to Yolanda Berryhill, or Yo, or Coach Yo, as she's known on campus. She is the head strength and conditioning coach for the Texas A&M women's basketball team, the home of the Aggies. Coach Berryhill, let me first start by thanking you for taking some time and joining us here on The Extra Edge. Without a problem. Happy to be here. Well, you know, you and I met at the Basketball Performance Collective in Cleveland, which we will talk about in just a little bit, but let's start here. I know you're off a 19-win season, and you made it back to the big dance for the first time in two years. Now, we're not going to talk about that controversial no-call or the buzzer beater that just missed in your first round game. We will not talk about that. But there is plenty to be proud of in College Station these days, the land of the 12th man. But today we're talking women's hoops. And this is where I start to wonder how much of a role the data played in all of your success so far and how in the future too. So let's start with the data, Coach. And I mean, you've been at this now for a little while and I'm just very curious. Where did you first get exposed to data and then when did you start using it? Ooh, okay, so uh, when I first started off as um, a younger strength coach, data was not even in my wheelhouse. Um, I went to Georgia State, you know, it was mid-major. Uh, football had some things, maybe baseball, right? But for the Olympic sports, we, we didn't have anything. So you talk about a stopwatch, a good pen, uh, maybe even a good pencil that with a good eraser and a recording sheet, right? And so that was my 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 intro to data and then i got my full-time job at appalachian state and then they started having different systems and so i started to get a little integrated in the system and i was like hmm how you know i was skeptical at first you know be honest right i i I learned um through a mentor that was extremely conservative and traditional right so gps and tracking load monitoring it was taboo it was taboo so getting into it at a very minimal level uh, and then I started to really get a good gauge on the intensity or the work that was done. And that was interesting to me. Right. It's like, OK, I can really sit here and and see different heart rates or see some miles accumulated. Right. And that was that was intriguing. And it allowed me to have more strategic conversations. And so as I continued my career um, and I got to SMU, maybe you know, a higher mid-major, um, then from SMU, got to Georgia Tech, then it's, it really took off. And so when I got to Georgia Tech, um, that's really when I really had a real good focus. I had to focus really, you know, in on it. We didn't have a sports science department. So my network was extremely important. Um, reading articles, all of that was extremely important for me. And it started to really really give some real strategic conversations, some proactiveness, um, some knowledge in game sessions that were that were incredible. And then I got to AM, right? Aggie land. And they said, hey, yo, uh, what you want? What system do you want? You know what I said? I'm just kidding. I said connects on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was that's like, right. <laughs> I, I was like, I want the best system. And they're like, well, what what is that? You know, I got with a sports science department and we talked about it and it was connects on. Period. There was there was no second choice. And so um, we grab whatever arms needed to grab. We got the system and it's been working phenomenally for us. It's been great. The people around and the customer service has been nothing but um, outstanding, in my opinion. Well, that's great to hear. And what what I think is is interesting about you and I've, I've he- I heard you talk on in some other uh, other places. And I heard you mention that early in your career, you rely on research, right? And then you'd see something new come out in the research and you'd be like, yeah, I don't know about this, you know? And then, but you always, you always did your due diligence and adapted to it if you felt it was worth it. I feel like you went down the same path here with data, huh? Was there a little bit of a trust building in this relationship with data? 
Absolutely. But the, the biggest thing was I didn't trust myself. Right. Like I was like, okay, so, okay, this is the start button. I think it's on. Y'all, th y'all know that this, this, you know, so, <laughs> so it probably was a little bit less of trust with Connect side and more of a lack of trust with me and my own capabilities with the system. And so, uh, with the village that we have, I, I, I got a, a cool, a cool and a good hand on it now. So, but yeah, it's always that bit of a, like, oh, this is uncharted territory. Uh, I hope I get this right. I really don't want to, you know, deal with this. If it doesn't work, I got to coach my kids. I can't, you know, it was, it was a lot of those apprehensions at, you know, at first, but, you know, the village we have, it's, it's pretty much a cool, cool routine now. So when you first got started, were you, I mean, because there are so many different things you can track. Were you able to like hone in on a few or 10 or, or can you talk about that? Yeah. Uh, you know, when I first started, I was, you know, people were like, hey, what about this? What about that? I'm like, just track it all. I don't know what I want yet. Let's track it all. And when we sit down and we look at it, then we'll trim the fat. But right now, let, let, if we can get some data and it helps me create um, a better program or it helps me be more proactive or at least more efficient when I have to be reactive, give me all the data. Give me all the information. Right. And 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 then now at this point with the village we have and the support staff that we have, we have now honed it down to uh a select few in the categories that we feel are sustainable that can be done when we need it to be done. And so we, we, we basically uh, have honed that down. Yeah. I'm, you know, I don't want you to give away any secrets, but like, we'd like to talk about the metric trifecta around here, you know, like maybe your top three metrics. Um, are, are there three that you kind of gravitate towards? I don't, like I said, I don't want you to give away any secrets, but if, you know, in a general sense, are there three that you're like, yeah, these are the three we can't do. Or even just if there's one where you're like, we are always going to make sure we have, uh, data in this uh, on this metric. Yeah, well, I mean, I can definitely be no secrets here, right? No secrets here. But when it comes to true basketball, like on the court, different things that are very sport specific, we're looking at AAL and AL, uh, the beings of AAL. Okay. When it comes for me and my daily training, I'm looking at heart rate. I'm looking at distance. Um, mainly, those are my two. So I guess we have four. When you think about it holistically, we have four that we truly look at, um, that we create, you know, reports for those are the four. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like as you look back on it or maybe, I mean, have you looked back on it and thought, you know, man, now that I have this data, it, like, it just opens up your eyes to so many things that you just didn't know before? Yeah, I guess it's less about that I didn't know before and more about how I can truly audit myself in my programming. You know, that's the kind of golden nugget that I have with, you know, tracking and, and connects on is that it allows me to kind of give a check and balance. And that's what I think is really, really cool. Because outside of connects on, I'm, how are my check and balances work? I'm uh, relying on my coaches. I, you know, it's not bad yet. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 can see a, I can see a good bid. I can get a good feel for things. But having that extra layer that's there to say, hey, we're doing too much or, hey, we're doing just enough or, hey, these trends are trending in a positive direction or they're they're not. That is the best thing for me. Right. Like I'll be the first one to say, oh, I got to change this up. Right. Or like, oh, I got to they're not accumulating what I know they need to accumulate in order to be successful. Right. So those that checks and balances, it, that's truly what connects on has given me. And it's been it's been delightful, to be honest, it's been delightful. I imagine, I mean, you talk about your village there at A&M, you know, all the coaches, everybody on the same page. What types of discussions do you have when, when the data comes in? You know, is it up to you to go to the coaching staff and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing? So we have developed a performance and wellness team within our women's basketball program that uh, is comprised of myself. Street the conditioning, uh, our athletic trainer, our sports scientist, our culture, or I would say uh, personal personal development coach, culture coach, and then our nutritionist. Uh, and then we'll have we'll try to have a coach involved when they're available. Um, and then we also have a uh, a therapist here, like a counselor here, they can come into. So, in those meetings. Connects on does get brought up. We get brought up every meeting, like, hey, we're trending in this direction. Or we can say, hey, this young lady's having a really tough time in academics. Okay, let's look at her trends. Oh, they are trending down. Hey, so and so, this is your lane. 
let's try and figure out what's going on, right? So connect sign is utilized in many ways. It is more so too in those meetings utilized in a holistic way, right? That holistic way is like, okay, we see a young lady that is uh, just trending down for some reason. Let's get to the let's get to the the cause of this. Maybe it's not physically related at all, but it at least gives us a, a good insight into how this athlete is performing on a daily basis, right? So that's kind of in our performance wellness meetings. Then we have the big women's basketball meetings, right? Where the coaches are all there. Uh, and, and, and we have a sports science fellow, Drew, who is phenomenal. He'll be available to anyone and everybody in a couple of years who, I mean, he is putting, I mean, he is 10 toes down and he is phenomenal at what he does and he keeps us all together. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and so when we do sit in those big women's basketball meetings, he takes he he, he takes it upon himself. Hey, this is what Connect Sun's looking like. We're doing great. Or we could do this or we could do that. He does a phenomenal job at that. And it is received extremely well. Probably the best I've ever seen it received by coaches. Well, and I want to try and maybe get into some specifics when we talk about the insights. But I wanted to ask you this first. Where do you think data collection helps the most in the game of basketball? Is it load management or, you know, or is it does it kind of spread across different facets of the game? Ooh, oh, man, that's a great question. I think when it's at certain parts of the year, it may take precedence in a, in a certain area. Like right now, the coaches aren't really, you know, thinking about the data. They just want the work right now. It's off season. So it's utilized heavily by me uh, at this point, especially when we conditioning and we accumulate yards and we're accumulating, you know, just overall intensity. And then our athletic trainer, when it's time to kind of remedy some of those weaknesses or asymmetries we have. We can see those uh, return to play right now, too. If we have someone coming off of just some nicks and pains or some chronic things, then we can look at that. So it's utilized heavy in our performance and wellness right now. Let's say we get into 20 hours. Oh, man, coaches are all on it. They're looking at, you know, what by position, by person, by team, what we like last year. So it, I guess it, it ebbs and flows in different areas, but it's utilized everywhere. You hear me, David? Everywhere. That's great to hear, you know, and one of the things that I, I saw one of your presentations and, and you you told the group you were speaking to that your goal that day was to help to fill the cracks in their program. And when you said that, I, 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 I thought to myself, hey, well, that's kind of what data collection does, I think, on a daily basis. And would you agree is that because this isn't about replacing coaches. This is about, you know, filling those cracks that you might have in your program or, you know, or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. A hundred percent. One hundred percent is is validating or at least confirming what I'm doing. Right. It is uh, confirming for an athlete. OK, these asymmetries are now they have decreased it's all either confirmation or it's something where, okay, we need a little bit more here. Okay, let's go to Connect Sign, right? I mean, it could be as simple as, oh, shoot, I missed the time. I had a time run to go back to Connect Sign. Look at this <laughs> when they started it, looking at heart rate. You know, like it's, it's the minor cracks to the big cracks or, or, or just small gaps where we can really feel by getting the information. And this what it is. It's information when we need it. And so let's talk about how you're using that information. Let's let's talk about some of the insights that that you have gotten over the years. And again, like I don't want you to give away any secrets, but but let's start here first. Are you using the data? I mean, off season I know is different than in season, but is this is this the information you're collecting used to build practices and build your training in the off season? Yes and yes, yes and yes. So uh, off season. I mean, I'm looking at it like I'm I'm I'm, I, I'm a lover of trends. Right. So if we're going to see trends at the level that I want to see, them, we have to be extremely diligent in collecting the data. Right. So we collect it. We phase everything we phase. When I say everything, everything from a warm up to a jog to if there's a, a, a run that we didn't account for, like we are phasing everything. And so when we get those reports on a weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis, I'm looking at these things and I'm like, okay, where were we weak here? Okay, let me look at Connect Sun. Oh yeah, it definitely shows we're weak here. So we need to think about that for next phase or for next year, right? Um, I'm looking at another um, line B. Okay, we coach mentioned that we weren't great here, so we need to do more here. Look at Connect Sun. Okay, we dwindle in June. We need to pick that back up in June. You know, so those like. 
putting everything, laying it all out, kind of seeing, confirming or validating or seeing if this was reliable or not, that's where Connexon comes in. And so it helps me build programs. Um, and that's where the individualization for my athletes come in, right? Is that I can see this information. I can see you for you. And I can see that you need, like, this is what needs to be done in order for you to get to the goal that you want to get to, right? And as for a team perspective, right? Coach wants a certain thing. Okay, well, we need to make sure we 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 work to get to that certain thing, right? So let's use Connexon and make sure that we are doing everything in an appropriate manner and efficient manner to get to that goal. So absolutely. Um, and then with my coaches, we're in season. I mean, co- there, there's there been exam. One example I will say that was I was very impressed by uh, our head coach, you know, asked one day she was like, you know, hey, we had a tough day this day. What do you think that AAL should be today? S- 750 coach, let's get the 750. You know, it's not too easy. It's not too hard. Let's get the 750. And she knows exactly what drills to put in to get to that 750. So what did that tell you? Well, that tells me that our coach is locked into what her drills, the output that her drills give. And knowing her outputs means that Connexon is doing its job. So she didn't have to come and look at the Connexon screen live to see where we were. She knew exactly the drills to put in to get to that 750. I was extremely impressed. So so she she noticed that her players we're lagging a little bit is what was what you're saying. And so now that you have the data, you know, you, you kind of have a database now, right? You have, you have some, you know, you have, you have a lot of numbers um, behind you. So now it's not just looking at it with your eyes and saying, eh, I don't know, maybe they're, maybe they're a little tired today. Maybe they were out to it's no, the data is telling me that they were off. So what, and again, without giving away any secrets, like what types of adjustments to the drills are made? Do you just say, okay, we're going to let them go at 50% today. Or I get what types of things that do you do? Do I do? So let's say, okay. Um, well, you know, number one, as a strength coach, I don't, I can't control practice. Right. So, if I'm looking at young ladies and I'm my coach's eyes like, oh man, they are dwindling quickly, right? Maybe it's the middle of the week. We've had a couple, couple, you know, tough days and they're dwindling. Coach can see, we all can see that they're dwindling, right? Go to the connect sign, uh, my, you know, live screen. We see whatever that load accumulation is and, you know, go to the head coach, but like, hey, they're here with this load. She can say, okay, well. Mm, knowing, right, mind you now, we've had a couple of years to kind of gather ourselves and understand our norms as a team. She can say, okay, we're here. Okay, we can probably muster out, maybe let's say another 150, you know, AAL. She knows exactly what drills to put in that because we built that database to your point. We built it. We have color coded it. So she knows those hard ones. She knows those in between ones and she knows those light ones, right? And so she can kind of just off the top of her head know what drills to put in, right? Or on the practice plan, she can decrease a drill or increase that drill, knowing what she's going to get from that drill. So that's one thing, right? And I'm just the messenger, right? I'm the one that just, oh, hey, coach. Hey, coach. You know, <laughs> I'm just, that's my role. Hey, hey coach. Throwing it out there, coach. You know, hey, hey coach, throwing it out there. <laughs> you know, that, that's my role. That's my role. <laughs> yeah. But so then when, did, I mean, do you have like that aha moment when you you look back on that and you made these adjustments and you saw the difference in the players, whether it was the next day at practice or in your next your next game where you said, man, that really made a difference, us pulling back on them on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. Do you have, did that happen? And were you like, wow? Yeah, great example. Um this this is we talk about trends again. Love me some trends. It, it tells me a lot. So from let's say year one to year two, right? We went with you know that that whole time where you have the holiday break and kids go home and they come back and then you're like, oh lord, dog, I hope y'all did. You know, like the, that that whole <laughs> uh, yeah. You got to do some trust ballerina involved. dance. You do yeah. in, in, during the holidays. So we get to that point, right? And you know we have now conference right after that break. So got to be strategic. Uh, I don't think we handled the load as best we could that first year, right? We're learning connects on, we have a brand new team, brand new coaches. I don't think we did the best job that we could have done just getting them back and ready. So we, we made a huge footnote for that year. We're like, I think this can truly be better, right? It seemed as if 
you know, we could have been more strategic getting ready to play our conference games after the break. So let's put that footnote there. And so in our performance and wellness meeting, we'll talk about it. I mean, we drilled it down, highlighted it. We made a note for it. It is always there. So when we got that um, binder, right, we get a binder or again, Drew, he's gonna, he'll be free in two years. All right. <laughs> uh, we get a binder at the end of each year with all of our connects on data. Right. And, and the things that we track and and how we look at that trends over time and by position and uh, and also what the coaches want to right? what I want, what the coaches want. And we saw that gap. We saw that crack. We were like, man, this, this, this part of the year doesn't look like how we trained, right? This, that certain part right during that break, it doesn't look the same. So then fast forward next year, we come around this time. Oh, we got it. So we, we, I mean, we, we, mm, that crack is full. You hear me? There's no more cracks in that system because we found out where we made, where that problem was. We fixed it. We used Connexon. We fixed it. We got them ready. And we had, a. I think we won that first conference game. <laughs> and and so was it a matter of, you know, you saying, look, we got to We've got to start a little more intensity round wise. We need more intensity. Intensity. Intensity was the thing. Right. I think we made the mistake of not thinking that in, they would have been OK with the intensity. We made the mistake of thinking we had to have this slow, gradual, you know, wind up to get ready. And in reality, our athletes are resilient. And so we switched it up. We changed some things. We had a certain type of uh, rhythm to it for like the first, I don't know, three, four days. And it was like, they didn't miss a step. That's see, that's, that's, that's exactly it. That's, that's what this is for. You know, whether it's, you know, practice times or intensities and, and all of these things, you know, knowing, and, and there it is, that's exactly it. Knowing when to pull back, but then also knowing when you have to ramp it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was and that was that a true aha moment for me and how it truly fortified my relationship with Connexon specifically, but just overall, generally speaking, with data. You know, yeah. Well, one of the things that I want to to ask you about is because one of the things that we're doing here at, at Connexon Sports and we're working with some teams is our women's initiative. And we're really trying to in women's sports, you know, put together like that total package, that holistic package for women athletes. Because obviously, I mean, we're different, right? Men men and women are different. And men and, men and women athletes are different. And, you know, and one of the big pieces of that is the menstrual cycle. And so I'm just curious, like over the years, you know, what, what your thoughts are and where are we at this point? I know we have a long way to go, but, um, you know, are you using any of the data and, and and maybe a demand plan or anything like that at this point with your women athletes? Well, um, being a, a woman myself, right, and understanding menstrual cycle now for a long, my whole life is I, I don't take too much stock in it. Probably a very unpopular opinion, and I'm okay with that. I just think, again, to my point of just, I think these young ladies are resilient through cramps, through them. Not. Now, I get it. There's some that are extremely bad. That's noticed without putting anything on. That's 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 just noticed. Uh, but I don't alter much at all, if if if, if at all. Um, I just think we're resilient that way. I think if there's a game to be played and you're and you're on your menstrual cycle, guess what? You're going to play that game. Mm -hmm. You're going to play that game and you are not going to complain about it. So we, we want to train and we want to we want to have that same type of attitude and efficiency all year long. There's no there's no. Hey, that's OK. Not at least not here. Not yet. <laughs> not here. But that, that's what I mean. Like there, there's such, there are such varying opinions, you know, on on this topic. But. I mean, we, we can, I mean, obviously though, you, you know, it is a different approach with women athletes for sure. Right. Yes, I, I absolutely. I do agree. I do agree. Um, but specifically in terms of a menstrual cycle, I don't really change any of it up. I mean, if they have to, you know, say they have to take a pause for a second. Okay. I understand. But we still, we still do our work and we still accumulate what we need to accumulate. So, you know, we, we talked a little bit about practice adjustments and, and things like that. Uh, when you look at the data. 
Has there ever been an instance, whether it's like during a game or you know, like right before a game where the data speaks about whether it's a, sp a specific player? Or do you see any trends like your player availability is up since you've been using data or maybe even a return to play protocol? You have a better return to play protocol with the data. Any of those come to mind? Uh, I would definitely say, you know, we, we, we def our first year we had a, you know, we had to really battle injuries. And so that return to play protocol, David, is fortified, tell you that. So uh, we definitely use Connexa heavily for return to play. Um, we have, a let's say, a transfer. You know, currently uh, we have a few transfers, but we had a transfer come in and she battled a ton of injuries. And guess what? We, we monitor every day, weekly, monthly for her. And she has been proven to, to she has been able to play. She has met her availability. Um, it's not a hundred percent, but it's definitely it's definitely up there. And so, as long as we can monitor her stuff and make that she make sure that her joints all together, <laughs> then then she she plays every game. But you're look so, but you're looking at her numbers, right? So you know where she is when she's in top peak performance. So so if she's if she's only running at seventy percent and telling you, you you know how is, if the players are like, coach, I'm good, let's go, I'm ready to go, and you're looking at it and saying, nah, no, you're not. You know, yeah. you know, like you 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 like you've been compromised, and I can still see it here. You, we need you here, and you're only here. Are those the types of conversations that happen? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and and for that particular young lady, she's responsible enough. Like she'll go look at the screen herself. She knows her her cap. She knows where to get. Like she knows which drills to get in and which drills to abstain from. Like she understands where her load monitoring is and her range, so that she's in things that are extremely important for her development. Right. So she's extremely an efficient player. Uh, and and it's been phenomenal. Like I, she doesn't have to come to me or Drew. She can go straight to the screen, see where she is, look at the practice plan, and know exactly what she needs to do. Yeah, how crazy is that now? To where you know, I mean, it's, it's lovely. Well, I mean, yeah, cra crazy in a good way. Where before it used to just, you know, I mean, you just had to go on field or trust. You know, it's just like when the manager of the baseball team goes out to the pitcher's mound and how you feel. Of course, the pitcher's gonna tell him every single time I'm good. Especially when it's kids, when it's kids, they're going to say, yeah, I, yeah, I know I'm, I'm at 120 pitches, yeah, but I'm still good, you know? But when you can look at that data and, and, and know for a fact that you're not good, I mean, it just, it's just a safer way to do things. It is, it is. And, uh, and also it just gives a more, it, it gives a certain efficiency too, right? And, and a responsibility, like, hey, you have a responsibility to know where you need to stop, you know, where you need to get in, like where where your energy needs to be expended. You need to know that. And over time, she knows it. And it's 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 actually pretty lovely because she's able to maintain her training load with me. She's able to able to maintain her training load in practice, her individuals, and she plays games. It's it's been phenomenal to feel to your point, to feel that gap. It's been phenomenal to feel that gap. Oh no, it's you know, it's it's just great to hear. And this is where, you know, we can talk about the basketball performance collective because I I, I see what you're trying to do. I and, and talk a little bit about what what it is, but I know you're trying to bring in all of these diff different experts in the field and and everybody gets to share their thoughts and, and kind of build on it. Can you talk a little bit about the basketball performance collective? Uh, so I started this uh two years ago. Um, it's very much in its infancy and it's a passion project. You know, it's that's what it started off. And honestly, I hope that's how it will end. Just as a passion project, being able to give back to a field that I enjoy and love so much and ever evolving. Right. So uh, it's it's a way to not only put people from again, I talk about my performance and wellness staff, the village. And I think. I have been tremendous in my position because of that village, because I have a sport scientist in a room, because I have an athletic trainer in the room. I have a sports psychologist in the room. I have like I have people in a room that help me do my job better. And so taking that entire philosophy and putting it into a realm where we can now add in women, we can add in sports, we can add in networking, we can add in uh, new revelations uh, or or refreshing old revelations, right? We can we can put those in a room and allow ourselves to grow when we talk about long-term development for an athlete, right? And it's been a beautiful thing to just watch people get in and see them lock into something and 
maybe spur something that they haven't thought about or even spur something newly that they have not thought about. And it's a way to bring more light or shine more light to the women in sport and our position as a street coach in basketball. I mean, it's it's been phenomenal, um, I will say. So I know they have something like this on the men's side, and that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. But being able to shine a light on this, on specifically the women, it's been great. And not and and honestly, too, at this time, it's it's trending, right? <laughs> Women's basketball is trending. So that's nice, but it definitely wasn't a, you know, it, it wasn't trying to go into something that was expanding. It was trying to fortify something that was already there. Yeah, but I mean time timing is everything, right? And and you know, and what what I love about it, because I, I was like I said, I got, you know, I got the chance to spend a little bit of time. Uh, since you were here in Cleveland, in my hometown, and I got the chance to to, to see a little bit of uh, what you were doing, and I think it's great because you have all of these different opinions, just from all of these different facets of the game coming together. Is there anything that stands out in your mind? You've done this now a couple of years, you know, that you learn from somebody who's not even a strength and conditioning, maybe a dietitian or, or or something. Yes, yes, it's, and, and that's it too, right? It's amazing bringing these different people they contribute to the athlete tremendously right like how can i fully do my job well if they're not fueling themselves correctly or they're not taking care of themselves uh, mentally emotionally spiritually right like those things and being able to listen to a dietitian listen to a sports psychologist is so eye opening like it's so eye opening like, i didn't even think of that right and it gives you it, it makes me become more of a creative and I think that's what keeps my training fun. That's what keep my ladies locked in. That's what keeps things fresh, right? When it's all about consistency, purpose, intentfulness, uh, just grinding it out day in and day. They see my face, I mean, for weeks, all the time, almost every day, sometimes on weekends, you know? So it, it definitely allows me to expand my, my, my wheelhouse. No, that's that's great. And one of the things that I noticed in, in, in the time that I was there, too, you see data now kind of floating into all of these areas, you know, not just you know, the strength and conditioning area, but it seems like, you know, analytics and data are, are, are kind of, you know, metamorphosizing into, you know, every single facet of, of sports or coaching now. What, I mean, is that safe to say? You know, I- if you're not evolving, you're dying, right? And I think as we continue on in this forever changing athletic environment and atmosphere, it's going to be all about how we do things, right? Because yes, NIL is a big thing now. So I'm sure I'm sure there's a ton of money that these athletes are getting now. But what's gonna what sets you apart outside of the money? What sets you apart? It, I'm sure it's a combination of some of the people, the facilities, but it's about how you do things. And so if Connexon is going to be the leading uh, monitoring, loading, tracking GPS system out there, then I want to get on that bandwagon. Number one, because I understand that data helps. It helps fill those cracks, number one. And number two, if we're going to compete, let's say, with all these other schools amongst all these elite athletes now that are, I mean, phenomenal, coming out of the gate, freshmen, all of that, then we have to make sure we have things uh structured, running, we have appropriate system. And if we're going to have an appropriate system, I think we have to have some type of technology. I think we just have to. Yeah. Well, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing now too, where you're getting data on high school kids now because of the the NIL. And it's if you're going to, you know, if you're going to be committing money to a recruit, right, you want to know what you're getting, right? It's like going to the produce section and squeezing that melon, right? Before, before you buy it, right? You know, I mean, and so to me, it makes sense. And that's why I just feel like, you know, the, the whole data collection process is just going to keep filtering down to, you know, from high school to who knows, could be eighth graders before we know it. I don't know, but because of the, you know, the money that's involved. Absolutely. I have the money, the money and just the, the, the tech piece, right? This this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Yeah. And, and the answer is that it gives you. Yo, Coach Yo, this has been phenomenal. And this is where I, I like to ask, is there anything that I didn't ask about or is there something that you'd like to talk about that I didn't bring up? Because 
I mean, everything that you're sharing here has been great, but is there anything that I missed? Oh, man, I think the biggest part for me is just how this has been. A, it, it gives us a way to keep us all together, right? Like the holistic part of it, the village aspect of it and how it keeps us grounded. It's just the biggest thing. Uh, also, you know, when the time that we talk about low minute players, high minute players, I just want to put that out there too. Connexon offers a lot of those insights for me when it, we talk about continually developing athletes through competitive, the, the competitive season. So outside of that, yeah, you hit home. I mean, this is a pillar of program. Well, and you know, it's funny you talk about the, the low minute and the high minute players. Like, I also feel like, you know, when you're building a culture, I, I feel like the low minute players probably feel more engaged, right? You know, because they're they're wearing the sensors too and they have, you know, they have marks that you want them to hit. Do you experience that too with, you know, when you we talk about the 12th man at, at Texas A&M, when, you know, when you talk about the, that that person who's maybe the 12th or 15th, you know, person on the end of the bench, you know, it, you know having the data and having them, you know, kind of competing against themselves has to help. Right. It, it, it definitely has the utmost potential to help but we do have to realize we are working with 18 19 you know year old you know athletes who want to play so i think connect sign just gives a it gives us an end for those strategic conversations right good or bad right it's all about being honest right i'm not here to to shoot smoke i'm not here to just tell you how i feel or tell you about my code i'm here to tell you what this shows in the work that you're doing so you know, if we have a, a young lady who may not be in the best mindset, they're not playing, right? And they're just not trying to do extra. Maybe they're just feeling that, hey, look, if you want to play, you need to be putting in more work. And sometimes that's all they need to hear, right? They need to see it. They hear it. Okay, cool. I need to do more work. Then you have the, the ones who are intrinsically motivated, you know, that they don't they don't necessarily need connect sign to give them that motivation. And at that point, that athlete, hey, I'm either going to pull you back I'm going to keep pushing you forward. Right. And so I, I, I just think it is how it's, it's how you utilize is how you do it. Right. And it's been it's been great for us. That's that's awesome to hear. Now, coach, if there's somebody who hears this and maybe has some questions for you specifically, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, email is great. Um, give me some time with the email. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but email is great. Uh, yberryhill at athletics.tamu.edu. Phenomenal. I will get it. Um, the other thing is uh, Instagram, um, yoberry32. Uh, you can look, you can find me through Aggie Hoops, uh, women's basketball Aggie, or you can just, you know, find me on IG and DM me and I'm there. Well, this is great. And now listen, not that I don't ever want you to not show up for one of your basketball performance collectives, but let's get you in the championship game and at the final four. And maybe you you, you can have Drew run the collective for you while you're out on the court coaching the Aggies to a to a national championship. David, that's funny. I definitely thought about that. And I was like, what happens if we're in the final four and I got this? It's still gonna happen. I don't care how it's gonna it's still gonna happen. I'm you know, I usually try to have though that BPC on the day between the games. So It'll still happen. I'm still there. Uh, it'll just look a little different in that regard, but it, I would still be there and it would still go on. Well, whether it's Drew, you could call me, just call for the crafty, the crafty veteran out of the bullpen. I'll come and help whatever it takes, you know, if, if we, if we get you there, but this is you, you are just such a joy to talk to the, the, the energy, the positivity. And I'm so glad that, you know, I'm happy that connects on and, and the data we're providing for you uh, is, is helping in, in such a, Great way, Coach Yo. I, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Absolutely, it was. It's been a. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. We'll have you back. Hey, if you know a great coach who's doing great things, winning games, and doing it with sports data and analytics, we'd love to hear about them. We may ask them to be a future guest on the podcast, just like we did Coach Yo. You could find us on Twitter and Instagram at Connexon Sports or on LinkedIn at Connexon Sports and Media. Remember, we want you to innovate the game by collecting the data getting those insights, and turning those insights into action. We'll see you next time.